Hi guys. So um, this is what I made. This is how it looks like. Uh, you can go to hubscape.com slash pine uh, or even github hubscape slash pine to take a look at it. So the idea is uh, what used to happen at night is um, because I have a baby now, uh, we often wake up and turn on the aircon and then uh, after 20 minutes still turn it off. So I was like, oh, why can't I like make a tiny little thing? That will just turn it on and then after 20 minutes turn it off or um, also program it in a sense that um, you can keep it in another part of the room that is uh, not near the aircon and if it is hot or cold based on that it can also turn it on and off so that was the idea so you can see it's really small here uh, this is the microcontroller here uh, this is the ir led that kind of uh, sends uh, the signals to the aircon. It can potentially send to Roomba as well or any other IR device. And this is the IR receiver uh, that I record and capture. So in terms of IR blaster, you can either have a dictionary of all kinds of IR code or you can record and capture it. So I went for the record and capture. So um, maybe I can just uh, show a very simple example, share screen. I guess I can go with the Google Chrome. Uh, so, sorry, yeah, this is like my first time I'm using Google. Uh, okay, so, so when I log in, and uh, I guess I can't, am I sharing my screen? Yes, right? Yep. I don't know whether you guys can see my. Yep. Uh, I see your screen. Can you see my? Are you? You can only see my Chrome, is it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we can only see your Chrome. You. Do you ah, want to okay. Anything? Ah, okay. Do? Okay. Okay. I guess I can. I can share the entire desktop, right? Yeah. Okay. Can share. Share the entire desktop. Can you see my entire desktop? Yeah. Yeah. We see your terminal now. Yes. Correct. So you see, I have plugged in, um, can you see my face? I've plugged in this via the USB and it has nothing there. So it tells me to go and configure. So let me try that. And um, this one also has web USB capability. So I can actually send message from here to my computer and it will display on the browser. So I like to use web USB. So now you see Arduino Zero, which is the microcontroller here. I will connect it. And uh, I hope you can see what I'm doing. Uh, so let's say I will use my um, aircon and I want to record the on button. So I'll say on. And what I'll do, I'll just simply point it here and notice what happens. Uh, you guys can see the array, right? So that's the on and then off. So once again, it will record the off. And maybe, uh, like I said, uh, every 20 minutes interval for a duration of three hours, ideal temperature is 26. And uh, here you can see, uh, once I submit it, a user config stored successfully. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening here, but nevertheless, uh, this is the idea of this uh, little device that I made. Um, so let me go through a little bit more on the hardware. So once again, uh, everything is on KiCad and schematic uh, is there. So if you look at the subsystems, the way I did it, uh, let's look at a power management system first. So we the way I did it is uh, now this guy, uh, I can also put it with a battery pack here. So I can... Uh, Made it such that this has a uh, two connectors here, and the PCB can come in here. And you see, I can turn it on, and whatever I programmed inside will be there. But at the same time, so this is the USB, and at the same time, it can also use the battery connector. So I used a P channel MOSFET to turn and off uh, which power source it's using. And of course, it has a, a low dropout. Um, LDO regulator, which will 
uh, put it down to 2.8 volts. That's what the microcontroller can take in. So this is the microcontroller. Um, lots of stuff there, but I guess if I go through the subsystems, you guys will understand better. So here's the IR receiver here that I talked about. This is the tiny little IR receiver, black color, black color one, and that's how the uh, the IR codes were captured. This is the IR emitter. This is where uh, the LED will kind of uh, shoot it out to either the aircon, the Roomba, or even Apple TV, any device that has IR. And finally, I put in a temperature sensor. So based on that temperature, you can uh, do certain actions. And finally, it has some status. LEDs. So that is about the hardware. The main thing is, as you can see, it's really small. And this is like the first time I actually broke it out of the microcontroller board. It comes with a lot of things and just took the microcontroller chip here. So it's really tiny and handy. And of course, uh, there's also the layout here. So in terms of the software or rather the firmware on board, I am using Arduino firmware. So there are two firmware libraries I want to point out. One is the IR2 library, lib2. And especially if you go here, IRLib2, and then under examples, the one I use is raw receive and raw send because that's what I'm doing. I'm basically capturing any IR signal and sending any IR signal. And uh, my favorite one, this is the web USB. That's how the exchange happens between the microcontroller and the browser. So this is what I'm using. Just to note about web USB, there are compatible hardware. So the one I'm using is Arduino Zero because the microcontroller must have the USB peripheral. Uh, so in terms of the microcontroller, I am using the Atmega SAM D21G. You know, uh, we always hear about the Atmega 328P, which is the Arduino Uno. This is slightly more powerful. There are three features different from Arduino Uno. Number one, it has more flash storage. And I needed that because I needed to store the IR code, which Atmega 328P could not do. And number two, it had a periodic wake up and sleep, which Atmega 328P did not have because it, it, it does not have a real time counter on board, but this guy has. And number three, uh, web USB. So this is one I'm using. And of course, in terms of the firmware, uh, I am using the Arduino Zero firmware. So once again, you can go to hutscape.com slash pine. Let me talk about the bill of materials. Um, I felt this uh, project is fairly cheap because there was no wireless. I mean, the only wireless is infrared and infrared is a very old technology. So if you're using IR, there is only the LED receiver and emitter and you know, Almost every remote control has it. And I think remote control is like what, 30, 40 years old uh, in mass uh, production. And uh, the most expensive thing uh, is basically the, uh, the microcontroller and the battery connector. I believe the temperature sensor as well. So it was about uh, US $10 and in Singapore dollars, it's about 13, but I think um, I had some parts that I could use on my own, but really uh, within $20, you can easily do this project. Uh, please go ahead. You can also download the bill of materials here. I bought it from LCSC and RS components and I manufactured the PCB from JLC PCB. And um, uh, my husband helped me solder it <laughs> because I was pregnant. All right, uh, so in terms of design, um, this is the subsystem level. I think I spoke about it. Uh, the microcontroller, the, the battery and the micro USB can power uh, the entire project. It goes through an LDO and then the microcontroller. And then in terms of the subsystem, there are four of them. So I finally want to talk about the programming connector. So uh, this microcontroller, when it first comes, uh, you need to upload the bootloader, the Arduino bootloader on it so that we can write the Arduino code on it. And in order to do that, uh, like I showed in the hardware, so if I go to the hardware um, and schematic, there was a section on the SWD programming. 
And that's why I had put in um, the six pins here. And the way we finally did it was uh, to use these pogo pins and press it against these um, six holes and then program it using this J-Link. I had to go through a lot of, uh, because it's the first time, I, I think this was the most difficult part for me. Actually, this was, uh, this is still, uh, I borrowed it from one of the hackware users. I think I even posted on hackware, hey guys, you know, I, I need this J-Link and somebody helped um, and posted it. Do you remember the guy's name? Uh, he actually gave this to me and uh, I still haven't get, given it back. So that's how I uploaded the Arduino bootloader, uh, which I think I should also show Arduino Stan B21G uh, bootloader. Uh, so basically it is the, this one, uh, it's, a, it's also another GitHub repository core. Yeah, so this is the repository uh, that has the bootloader. And if you go under the bootloader, basically all the SAMD ones, of course, the one I chose is zero. So you have to compile the bootloader and you have to upload it. Of course, when you buy Arduino zero, it comes with it, but when you're making your own PCB, it does not, so you have to upload the bootloader. So that was a, a very challenging part for me. Uh, so that's in terms of um, uh, the design, the bootloader. Let me talk about the lessons learned uh, as the final thing. Um, so, uh, I would love to know from any one of you who have made uh, IR based projects, I would love to use uh, SMD components next time. I don't even know whether I should because uh, I would love to get it all uh, assembled in a pick and place machine, uh, totally automated. And I think through all components, you have to manually do it. I would love to look for SMD components for the IR receiver and emitter, which you can see it's kind of sticking out. I also would love to use a nine pin uh, JTAG and SWD connector. Like I said, I had to use a pogo pin and kind of like press it on. But instead of that, I will use the 10 pin uh, standard connector that comes uh, for SWD programming. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, the rest of them are um, kind of general um, uh, lessons that I took from other projects. Oh yeah, about the reverse polarity circuit. So I used basically uh, a simple, um, for the reverse, let me show you the reverse polarity circuit. So in order to protect the PCB, I use a diode, basically a Schottky diode. Uh, but I think a better way to do it will be to use a P-channel MOSFET. So under lesson learned uh, in my next version, I think I'm gonna use a P-channel MOSFET for reverse polarity circuit. And uh, yeah, what else? I think, uh, yep, that's about it. I mean, I take a lot of less time, but uh, yeah, you can go and visit this project and uh, all the references and whatever I did is all here. I don't know how much time I took. <laughs> okay, thank you, Sayani. Any, yeah. Do you have any, anyone has any questions for her? Sure. Uh, actually, uh, two questions. One, did I see correctly that your reverse polarity protection was a diode? Uh, Roland, yeah, a bit soft. Oh, no. Okay. Hang on. Uh... Right, how's that? Yeah, that's good. That's okay. Good. Did, did I see correctly that your reverse polarity protection using a diode was done by having yeah, the diode connected backwards across the battery? Not in yes, the battery, right Holy I'll cow! I'll show you again. Did you, did you test I'll that? <laughs> no, I did not. I did not. Well, I, I did not. The magic smoke. I did not test well. it. No, I did not. That's why, yes, I know. I got the, yes, I know. This is it. Can you see so, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so all I was getting yeah, is. This is it. Even yes, even I know. Use, I know. That's why even, in the lessons learned. In the lessons the diode, learned. <laughs> put the diode in series in the right direction, not in. Wow. That's, yeah. I mean, impressive. Yeah. Uh, but the question I wanted to ask uh, really was about. Um, the motivation for turning the air conditioning on and off in the first place. And yes. As, as speaking as someone who first had to live with air conditioning all the time when I moved to Singapore a bit over a decade ago, I have a whole set of frustrations and concerns. But I was wondering, is your concern principally comfort or cost or some combination of these? It is uh, mostly comfort. Uh, 
to be honest, uh, for my second version, I would probably want to have it uh, Wi-Fi enabled as well so that I can actually control it. Right now, if you notice, I cannot control it. I can only program to do certain things by itself. So it's mostly definitely comfort because I need to turn on a, like for example, to be honest, uh, I found new users to control it after having a kid, like she's sleeping inside and sometimes I forget to turn on or turn off the air con for her comfort. And I cannot go in because it's dark and I do not want to disturb her so I can just turn it off from outside. So things like that. Okay. Or even in the middle of the night when I wake up, sometimes I do not want to like stay awake just to turn it off after a while. So I just want to turn it off after a while. I, just a sort of background question. I've noticed that the thermostats for air conditioners, uh, perhaps it's true over in the world, but of course I've had to deal with it in person directly only in Singapore, uh, never seem to want to turn the compressor off. Even if the room temperature is several degrees below the target temperature, the, the compressor stays on. Uh, it, just, it just keeps pumping cold air into the room. This is in office systems and in home systems. It seems a universal thing that says, the thermostat uh, only ever changes how hard the compressor works, but it's never an option to turn the compressor off. I suspect there's a, there's a power cost with, with starting the compressor, but it's, yeah. I was intrigued to know whether you're, because my, my backup question is, have you studied the power use? But that's a separate question. Uh, power use of this guy? No, the air conditioning unit. No, <laughs> when, I did not, I did not. When you turn it on and off versus leave it running on, a, on its own thermostat. Uh, okay. It's a question I have. I want to do myself at some point just to interesting to yeah. repair those things. That's an interesting thing, yeah. But actually measure the, yeah. the, the power use because my guess is that the turning the compressor on and off uh, is mm -hmm. probably consuming a great deal of power. Okay. Because the inverters that are now in use are extremely efficient. They, they're right down right. to a sort of coasting level, right. but not actually off. You know, that's anyway, okay. That's better. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone has any other questions? If not, I think we can move on to